people around here that uh, uh, are, pro are probably new to, to the research seminars, right? We usually, yeah, we are this kind of funny people here that uh, we, we never start with the serious part of it, right? Uh, we teach and, and rumble and we never come to get to serious, right? <laughs> Uh, but we will do some very serious uh, stuff uh, today, and not only today, we will do some very serious stuff for the rest of the semester for those who, who are with us. Uh, we have uh, speakers from all these different universities in the Americas and also in Europe, in, in, in other uh, uh, parts of the world, that we hope will contribute uh, for us to have information systems uh, each time uh, a stronger research field in, in, in our in our in our region and it's great to to see people i already see people from several different uh countries here mexico well not mexico any longer right now he, he became a gringo guillermo from mexico aurora from chile uh jose robles uh from peru and now maybe i, I need to to put my glasses on because those people that don't show their faces then i cannot uh uh carlos chavez where are you from carlos if you have a mic there hi hi i'm from panama Thank you. From Panama, we'll have a lot of people from Panama. I don't see uh, uh, Donna around yet, but uh, Donna is doing a great job. Panama was the second country with the largest uh, group of participants at Isla this year. Uh, it bit it bit Mexico, Guillermo. And no, no kidding. I know that's that's not hard to do. <laughs> it also bit uh, Peru, Pepe. How come did it beat our uh, uh, Chile Aurora? Why? I'm just putting some pressure on these guys here. So the next year <laughs> competition. Uh, <laughs> Is that, is that a oh, you, why, why don't you we ask for everybody to rename and who i don't know it's not easy to rename it's, here in the google moment because you can put you. your country it's your original no. no it's only but, when you get inside so probably you yeah, Mah mahi was having that idea because uh we will ask i, I mean we have uh, a lot like uh, carlos is pro uh, i think carlos is a is a uh, uh possibly a, a graduate student there in in panama uh we have well carolini is uh, is well, from from Janeiro, no. right she's, she's yeah, one of our students she's my, my student carolini uh, and, and then we have uh Pie yeah. pietro is one of the uh unpatch guys thank you pietro for being there uh well elaine is also co-sponsoring these and so we, we have plenty of people from different countries there and today we will uh, have an opportunity for if you know anything about how information systems started to happen in your countries we will have plenty of opportunity to share because in fact i think we know much less of our own history than we should. And uh, when we were prepared, when Mah Mah Mahi was preparing for this and everything, we were thinking we have to, sometimes we have to look back so that we understand where we go from here, okay? Uh, well, well, while people are still joining, uh, I, if you allow me, I would like to share with you, uh, but uh, last week you asked, uh, what are we going to have in the next weeks? Uh, and I told you we will, we will be filling in uh, the program uh, here in our Moodle page. And I will put all those links there again for those who may not have them. Uh, but we have most of the, 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 the seminars already have, let's say, a topic and a presenter. Uh, this is going to be uh, a series of seminars. So they are not well structured in the sense that uh, we, we should never expect that whatever we discuss in one week will be followed the next week, right? Because it may happen when we can do that, we do it. Uh, but it's each one of them is, is standalone. There may be people that are here because they are interested in the history of IS, uh, for, and, and they're here only today, for example. There will be people that will be here next week because they want to un understand the profession uh, of information. Well, well, someone who works in, in the field of information systems, and Indira will be, uh, well, our specialist in that uh, sense, will, uh, will talk to us about that, uh, that. And then we'll have some sessions on e-government. So the topic will vary over time. Uh, some of, of us will be here simply because, I mean, we are involved with everything that relates to information systems, so we'll be here for the whole time. Uh, for those who are here, just, uh, uh, you know, for specific uh, uh, situations, I will include in the links, uh, in, in, sorry, in our chat, right after I, I, I'm on a task, right, so I can never do that. Guillermo is better than me at that, right? I can never do, uh, talk to you and write at the chat at the same time, but I will include in the, in the chat several links. One of them is for certificates. Like if you if you want to have a certificate of any of our uh, seminars, during the seminar, there's always going to be a link there that you ask for that certificate and you will receive through email afterwards your certificate for participating in that specific seminar. And there's also the possibility, uh, as we have many graduate students here, that you take this uh, series of seminars uh, for uh, credits, right? Some universities accept that you take credits in a different university. And uh, UTFPR, the Tecnologica Federal do Paraná, is uh, uh, allowing any any graduate student who's who's interested, and, and we even uh, have some uh, uh, exceptions for undergrads, 
uh, when, when, when the professors tell, yeah, this, this person is, is someone who invested in research, they can all also take this and uh, those guys will get credits at the end. Of course, those that are taking this as a class, let's say, and, and I'll call class in quotation marks, then of course, uh, you have to do a little more than just watching. And the idea is, you, you probably notice that in our Moodle, we always have uh, some papers that are suggested for reading. And then what we expect from those who are students taking this for credits is that, uh, well, first you enroll as a, a student at UTFPR, I'll also include the link there. Uh, and then you, every week you will read those papers and write a little summary, right? So I think that's for, for my uh, preliminary uh, talk here. Just want to browse very quickly here through the, 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 the seminars that we already have there. So uh, topic one was last week, uh, we don't bother. Topic two is the topic for today. And I'm already, well, uh, again, reintroducing Marie, who's one of the co-hosts anyway, information systems in Latin America, looking back to see ahead. Uh, this is what I, I was telling you about for students uh, it will be great. And again, this is only because you want to be serious. I mean, if you're going to get credits, right, uh, as if you were really studying, uh, we want you to put some more uh, effort, please. Uh, what you have to do is for the next sessions, you read whatever is assigned there before and write a little summary. We know that some of you, English is a challenge, but still show some efforts uh, and that will be rewarded. Uh, so we have uh, Mahi's, uh, in, in fact, it's not Mahi's presentation today. Today, it's going to be a, let's say, we'll do this together. Uh, there's uh, all these researchers from different parts of Latin America that will try to bring their perspectives into how IS came about. Uh, next week, we'll have uh, Professor Indira Guzman from Trident University talking about uh, research on the IT occupational uh, uh, culture, right? Uh, I still don't have her, her, the papers here, but I will, if she's not, she's not with us, I think I haven't seen her around yet, but mm -hmm. otherwise it will be there, right? Uh, and then uh, uh, the week after, we will have Professor Rodrigo Sandoval uh, Almazan from the University Autónoma de, de Mexico, who's uh, a specialist in e-governments, as well as, well, Aurora, Mahi, and so many others that are here with us. Uh, and he will bring us some insights about the use of artificial intelligence in, 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 in govern, uh, government. Then we have this very provoking talk by Professor Fred Niederman from St. Louis University, The Future of Work. I well, he, he, he even uh, provides us with, with many more papers here. They're all very interesting. Um, I will send you an email. All the students, I'll send you an email explaining this uh, better. And I'll probably do it in, in Portuguese and Spanish as well, just to make sure that everyone understands what we have to do for the next sessions. This is going to be very thought-provoking. Thought uh, then we have uh, three uh, weeks here that our idea was, uh, and we're still trying to have that uh, some e-government happening there, uh, maybe uh, with some people from Albany in the US. We're still negotiating that, hopefully. Uh, so, so we have three weeks that are still spared. We already have uh, uh, some other uh, possibilities in mind. Uh, then we'll have Anol Batacerji. I never, I can never pronounce his name. I don't know if Aurora can pronounce it better than I can, but he is one. Did you say Batacerji? Batacerji. Uh, he, he is very, uh, he's, he's, he's very well cited uh, in, 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 in our field. And besides, well, he's, he's even written a, 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 a book that I hope he talks a little bit about, uh, uh, a free book, an open book uh, on uh, methods for research in uh, not, necess not not only in IS, but uh, research in, in soft sciences uh, in, in, in general. Um, then we have uh, appropriation of IT technology. It's basically uh, what we're talking here is about adoption, acceptance, and things like that. It's going to be Ricardo Engelbert from uh, ICE, ISE in, in Brazil. Uh, then uh, it's me again talking a little bit about collective intelligence. That is my dear topic of research. Uh, Professor Zander Bobino from uh, Université du Québec to talk about co-creation. Uh, then we'll have uh, Renata Araujo. I don't know if Renata is already there. Talking about the uh, public process uh, are open for play. So she will be talking about gamifying somehow. Uh, well, I'll not get into details. I'm only showing you that this is finally we already have a program with uh, many of the of our speakers uh, uh, there, right? Uh, then we have uh, Professor Alvaro uh, Arenas uh, from IE uh, Business School in Spain uh, in, in the search of business models for data sharing. Then we have uh, Michael Myers from the University of Auckland. Uh, we we'll all have to be here. We'll have to invite many more people to come here because this guy will be talking at four o'clock in the morning or something, right? Or maybe it's a little later than that. Uh, if he's doing the efforts and besides one of the most renowned uh, um, researchers in the field of information systems in the world right now. 
Uh, and then we have uh, another, well, this day here, I, I didn't include here it yet, but I, I can already tell you uh, who it's going to be. It's going to be uh, 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 Stacy um, talking uh, uh, talking about, uh, well, well, continuing on a discussion that she started at, at Isla with us about uh, responsible research. Uh, we may be involving some having, instead of just uh, another talk, because we already have a talk of hers in Lacais. Uh, channel uh, like I should, uh, if you wish to. In fact, I recommend it's very, it's it's very revigorating. It makes us feel that we are doing the right thing when we can align the research that we are doing with uh, with a, a topic that is also important for for society and for for humanity. So she will be back here, but maybe maybe it's going to be a panel if we can uh, organize it. It's not completely organized, but it's going to be uh, Stacy who, who's going to be with us there. And uh, our surprise guest, well, some of you already know. It's going to be Steve Alter uh, last uh, day uh, of the year. Well, having said that, uh, uh, Mahi, I think uh, I will pass it on to you so that you will share your previous slides. And again, saying that uh, Mahi's intention is not to give us a, a, a speech, it's to start our conversation today. Thank you. To Actually, Alexandre asked me to organize this session, um, and it was a big challenge to me, actually, uh, it's something that I'm thinking quite a lot, uh, how information in Latin America, I asked in Latin America is going on and how was uh, the back and the, the past, the history and, and where we are going, where we are uh, in the future, where we are going to be. And it's something that we started to, to talk a long time ago, Alexandre, remember, uh, I think, I don't remember, 90, no. Uh, around the, the 2000 something seven something like this that we started to work on this uh, history of IS actually in Brazil. And then, I, we, we wrote a paper together in 2007 or so. Seven something like this, yeah. It was in that moment that we started to think about the, the uh, our area uh, in Brazil, specific in Brazil. And then uh, now Elaine and me we started to to teach a, 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 a we create a new course in at Copiagi. And we started to talk again about this topic and okay more than 10 years after our paper so it's something that um started i stopped to think and well now it's quite different than it was when me and alexandre started to to talk about this topic now 10 years after the area changed a lot have changed a lot and now uh, i think it's, it's a moment to to think how is our area right now not only in brazil but in latin america we have seen that latin america has increased the participation in is research and lacais and isla and all this stuff that we are involved with uh has showing that and well now right now we have almost 40 people here and probably we're going to have thousands of people seeing i hope so uh seeing this this video in the future so um this is something that um in, require me to think where we are going. So, but it's, it's specific, but this is quite important to, to think, uh, well, how was our past to understand where we are going and where is our future? So, uh, the, I try to find a, on a, on a, I would say on a concept of IS field. And as probably most of you already know, it's not something easy to define. Uh, I, I, we, we suggest some papers that uh, discuss this uh, IS uh, fuel concept, but of course, I don't think that right now in this moment is, is, is the right moment to discuss this because it's required a lot. I think we can take hours discussing this, uh, but it's something that requiring uh, to understand in the, the beginning, how was the, uh, the, the the IS field, the, the idea of IS field. So the academic field information system has a region in applied computer science studies in the 60s, which aimed to systematize design, the design of data processing application organization. So in the 60s, we start, let me say. Uh, and then in that moment, we have these five main thematic area of IS research, applications in information technology to support functional organizations, the process of IS, uh, of system development, information system management, and um, organization value of information system and uh, societal, um, I cannot see here, impact of information system. So this is something that was very, uh, let me say, uh, traditional uh, topics, but right now we can see that it has changed quite a lot of these, these topics and this is something that we want to discuss with all of you here. 
So uh, it's, it's also important to uh, to remind how was the beginning of our area in international level in the earliest the computer application studies start around in the 70s and then we we see in, in 70, 1972 an american computer society uh, they publish a curriculum for two years master degree on computing and in a business contest and then rise the international federation of information processing probably you already know many conferences right now i feel i feel the gov i feel um, group of working group nine part four and Pepe is already know because he is involved in the organization of that uh, in Peru next year. Uh, and then we, uh, in 1977, the MISQ, the Management Information System Quarterly Journal and the Information System Research Journal in 1987 uh, has arise and, and make this our area more, uh, let's say, uh, consolidating our area. So this journal right now, they are top journals in our area and they started in that, in that moment. The ICIs in the beginning, so in the, in the American um, Information Conference, uh, Information System, no, International Conference of Information Systems in the 80s, and then uh, IS was created, and, and in the 1994, uh, around the same moment and the same period, uh, the uh, European uh, Conference of Information Systems uh, started to to happen, so we can see that uh, we the American started before you know, this this uh, to uh, to understand as an area in the in the U.S. But we around the 90s we start to see that more social um, technical approach from the European studies, especially in the U.K. and I think in Scandinavian countries, Germany. So they started to 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 take uh, to take a look on IS in a different way than the, the U.S. Um, so I think given a, a very quick overview of our area international in the international lab, uh, on the, the um, uh, in the 2014 and 2013, uh, they, they organized some meetings, uh, related to, uh, to try to, um, document and try to understand the history of IS. So you can see on this, um, uh, link in the IS, uh, you can find this IS history. So it's quite important to understand and they, uh, this uh, Zangi, the, the, one of the papers that I um, put, uh, that we, you can find on Moodle, you will see that the history of IS and she make a very good job in that moment, uh, uh, making several uh, interviews with um, the beginners of our areas. And, and all of these documents are on this website, so you can find that the, the events, the, 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 the videos of this um, uh, conference, of these meetings and, inter and interviews. So it's a key. Mahir, I think it's not only AMSIS, right? It's all, I think at that year, it also they also had special sessions in uh, ISIS. Yes, I put AMSIS. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I think on the PPT, I put AMSIS, um, but actually, you, you cannot see probably the, the print that I made here. But it's, um, yeah, you're right. And, and I've seen several. Uh, in, during 2013 and 2014, they made several, uh, no, in the all meetings of IS, they, the, uh, the, the, the ancillary meetings and so on, they made very, several uh, discussions of histories and, and of IS. So um, this is quite an interesting uh, material that those who are interested in the history of IS can find there. Um, yeah, now you can, yeah. So in Brazil, what's going on in Brazil, I try to, uh very try to make here a very quite uh very quick review uh in the 90s so uh the uh, now in brazil we call adi administration de informação that means around management information system uh right now pietro that is around i don't know i cannot see if uh, Jimara now that is our colleague from the the the, right now me pietro jairo and Jimara, we are the 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 um, the shares of this uh, track in Ampad. Ampad is the international, is our uh, association of uh, management, uh, research management in Brazil, very uh, a big uh, association here in Brazil. And they have several tracks in uh, management. And what in the 90s, in 90, specific on 1994, uh, ADE started, the, the track in administration in MIS starts in Brazil. So, uh, Enrique Freire, that was my supervisor and my master supervisor, uh, he actually, I forgot to say something, to introduce myself actually, uh, because I started to talk and I 
forgot to that most of you don't know me because I just see the, the people who know me. So uh, I, I studied master in, in Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, uh, and Rick Freitas, that was one of the uh, founders of the, our area in Brazil, was my supervisor, and, and my PhD was in at USP, uh, and Nicolau Reinhard uh, was, one my, was my supervisor, and he's also one of the um, founders of our area. So um, right now I can say that I am from the second generation of IS uh, in, in Brazil, IS area in Brazil. One thing uh, for, for others in other countries to understand that here in Brazil we say that we already have the, the, the parents, the children and the grandchildren. And I think that by now we also have great grandchildren. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Uh, so this is a, a good point, Alexandre. So, but in, in that moment, I, I made my master in 1996. I started my, my master. So I was one. I was in the beginning, the starting point. So that's why I'm saying that I'm the second generation because my my teachers like Becker and um, and, and, and Ricky Norberto. I don't know if they are around here, but uh, they were my my, my professors at, at Universidade Federal in Burgos, and and they were one of the, the founders of IRA in ADI in Administração de Informação in Brazil. So and so we can see we can and one of the papers of um, Enrique um, uh, that was um, published in HESI that one that is one of our Brazilian journals in our area. Uh, um, it was uh, back, I think, was Norberto together. I think Henrique uh, Norberto, and I, I think Chris, and I forgot the other one who published the, the paper. But they, they, they divided our area in, in like three uh, moments uh, 1994 to 2002, the starting point that was, and then after 2003 until 2013, that they, when they closed their study, they say that it was the consolidation of research groups. And I add here the, the, the third moment that is between uh, the second moment that he uh, put here. Uh, I would say that around 2000, 2005, the Brazilian has started to get uh, international recognition of our research in IS. And uh, this makes some uh, quite difference because it opened our doors in, internationally. So in that moment, for instance, I, I made my call here in Brazil, Dr. Abson Wishes, uh, that is part, it's like split um, part of um, our PhD course. So I study at, in, in Cambridge uh, with Bolsham, for instance, just to have an idea that uh, Nicolau opened this door for me, for instance. And then probably many others started in L LSE and other um, countries um, around the world. So because they started to, uh, they got to, to make this uh, recognition, uh, in, in internationally recognition, and they opened the doors for us for the second, the third, and, and so on generations here in Brazil. So yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, Eleni. Please. And now we have no sounds, Mike. Sorry. Do you prefer to have questions by the end or during your presentation? Uh, I think, I don't remember if I have any other. Uh, no. I, I, I think you, you, anyone can jump in at any time, yeah. so feel free. Okay. And besides, the, uh, Marie has given the, 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 the news <laughs> from, from, from ADI, which is Admi Administration of Information in Brazil, let's say ADI. Uh, but we, we also have uh, uh, Renata Araujo here with us, who can later add uh, uh, also the perspective of people who are doing information systems from uh, from a computer science uh, school. So she's already there as, as well. But let's jump in, Elaine. So if you have a question already, feel free. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have because uh, I'm a little bit curious about how the, uh, our area was were developed in Latin America. So when I see this this point and this kind of division, like the starting point, I think maybe we can try to explore a little bit and uh, heard about our colleagues about how, how yeah. it was developed over there. Elaine, this was my intention right now. Uh, uh, Alexandre, if you go ahead, you see that I think the, the first question is exactly right now that is related to the starter point. So, uh, Alexandre, no, that's okay, Elaine. Uh, that's what I want to know now because I already talked about Brazil, something around Brazil. Probably my Brazilian colleagues can add something. Uh, because of course I don't know all the specific uh, details, and and but I want to hear about uh, from our colleagues, Latin American colleagues, uh, with the regions of IS in your communities, in your countries, uh, this is starting point of IS in your country. So please, um, if you want to take part of this, yes, Aurora. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Marianne. I think it's uh, very interesting to know how we uh, have been traveling to this MIS uh, field for such a long time. And I was uh, wondering because I I I think I was um, 
I was reviewing in Chile because I was part of the story. I mean, I don't want to say that, but I'm, I'm very, very close to the people who started the field in Chile. I, I was uh, doing some little research in MIS and, and I, I came with, um, with the first um, uh, MIS area in uh, the university was in, in 1974 in, in Universidad de Chile. Professor, uh, Professor Victor Perez, uh, uh, Oscar Barros and Antonio Olgado, they created the area of MIS at the, in, in the industrial engineering uh, department um, uh, in, the, in the engineering faculty in, in, in Universidad de Chile. Uh, these three professors were the pioneers. You know, I could say the pioneers because they were really is very much into it. They also, in 1970, I, I wrote it here, in 1975, they created an institute. It was a uh, TISA. TISA was, um, was an institute for technology sciences and for basically for those MIS professors to start doing some programs, uh, not at the university level, but training you know, other professionals, you know, in 1975. And um, in 1980, 1982, uh, Professor Victor Perez wrote his book. Uh, it was, was the first book I, wrote, I read about MIS. It was 1982. He wrote the book, uh, Inform uh, Administration System and Management Information System, in 1982. And he was, I was very much concerned about the topic. I was, uh, at that time, very interested in, in other areas, but I liked the idea. And I started reading that they wrote, uh, Oscar Barros and these three professors uh, wrote uh, a couple of books. And then in 1985, they started an MIS program in the Universidad de Chile. It was a specialization in MIS um, in 1985. And uh, this specialization was the first specialization in Chile in MIS, 1985. In 1990, I started this specialization and my, my, my advisor was Professor Victor Perez. And I worked with him for a couple of years uh, in Santiago, in the MIS in the Universidad de Chile, when I was doing the master. And uh, uh, he was such a knowledgeable person and, and was my, my, role at my, my role model in the area. And he was so, so, so smart. He was uh, the, ch the, the chancellor of the Universidad de Chile for two periods. And very, everybody really liked him. He's still teaching at the university. He's very old, but he's still there. So maybe we can invite him one day. He's a very active person. But I think uh, these three people uh, from 1970, 70, around 74, was the first MIS uh, organized area at the university. And uh, they really pushed the issue. And they started doing the first, uh, the first web page constructed uh, in Chile was um, in, in the year 1985. We have the first uh, the first uh, uh, internet connection with uh, with web page uh, for for the Universidad de Chile, and they they did a they did a great job because they they started you know building another careers I mean another areas in computer science but MIS was just mainly at the industrial uh, engineering department and, and other you know careers came after that but I think um, I think these uh, three pioneers in Chile uh, did a lot of, of work in order to to put the MIS area. I remember the first journal I saw was in the office of uh, Professor Victor Perez. I was uh, reading, he said, look at, I wrote an article. It was information and management, the journal, I remember. He said, I wrote the article there, I look at this. You know, it was like, the article was around 1980, really or something, 1982. And uh, he, 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 he wrote this article and he said, read it for your, for your, for your work. And I, 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 I learned a lot and, and I think they, they have a, a very, very much, uh, uh, we have to thank them. And, and probably today we have uh, careers in Chile, uh, MIS programs in most universities. My university already have uh, two programs and most university has MIS programs in Chile. And even at undergraduate careers, we have a, a, a programs that called information management. So this is the story uh, in Chile. And I think uh, these professors were coming back from their master program in the US in the 70s. I think he was coming back uh, uh, from the 72 or 70 from the from the uh, from the master program to study the area in Chile. So that's a uh, very old, I could say. <laughs> we, will, we will sound a bit like alcoholics anonymous, uh, anonymous here, but thank you very much. Or uh, <laughs> I see that Guillermo has his hands up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, can, you cannot hear you, Guillermo. I have a question for Aurora. Is the uh, MIS area still in the engineering school, or has it moved to the business area? No, it's still MIS is still in engineering. Okay, yeah. But 
we have also MIS in the business school. So we don't not only have it in engineering, but also in the business school. So, we so somehow it's a, a little bit redundant. Yeah, we have and, both in the computer and in the computer. <laughs> computer, computer, they don't, they, they have computer science, but not MIS. Probably they could have a couple of courses, but they don't have programs in MIS. Well, you know, if, if you think about it, something went really sour in Mexico in the sense that uh, the first program was founded in 1971. That was at Monterrey Tech, and it was an MIS program. And at the time, it was called uh, Administrative Computing, right? Uh, and it was differentiated from the uh, computer engineering, computer science program that started two years before in 69. So what happened in all this time, right? I mean, like, how come it did not evolve a lot, lo a lot more? Because those programs actually, you know, they linger for quite a long time. And then the, uh, the departments of information systems as such existed, but true in the engineering schools, okay? Not in the business schools. And there was a lot of uh, 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 probably, what do you call it? Uh, a discussion whether you should go to the business school or not, or, or whether you should put more subjects related to business and then run the risk of being absorbed by the business schools. That's the way it was perceived, right? That if we put it to business -y, they might want to take us to the business school and we want to stay in the engineering school. And so it was it was kind of a, a funny thing. In the, in the 1980s, I was able to do a, a master of information systems that had existed for quite a long time and, and it was very much related to that. But at the time, we have to also understand that the, the discipline evolved a lot in the content, that it was a lot more technical at the very beginning. So the first programs in information systems, they even had to program in assembler, right? And then you move on, and then you go a lot more to, to deep programming, structure, uh, data, and stuff like that. And then you move on to the to, to, to what it is now, that, that you have a, a real problem. I, I, when I talked about this in the Lampaji a few years ago, I, I mentioned that the discipline had a, a personality problem because it came to a point in which you see all these new careers coming up, right? Like a media developer and a social media uh, manager. And then you have, uh, I don't know, the uh, virtual reality professional. And, and now we talk about internet of things and you, we talk about uh, big data and data science and you talk about uh, business analytics and we talk about the others and you say, is this MIS or is this not MIS? So how far does it go? And then you say, okay, data science probably is computer science and then Business analytics is MIS. I don't know, or is it something else, right? And 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 then you have even this uh, associations like ACM, IEEE that always do new profiles of reference for curriculum development, integrating new curricular models other than computer engineering, computer science, information technology, uh, professional, etc. And now they have data science, then they have. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Well, artificial intelligence, and then have others that have kind of spin off, right? The old computer disciplines. Anyway, what in Mexico happened is that we have to understand that the, the, the pioneers did not have an MIS education. Okay. They were coming from any other discipline. They were probably mechanical engineers or at the best computer scientists if they existed already. Or in Mexico, there were a lot of cases in which, in which chemists were the directors of the computer, of computer companies. Okay. So, is it a first generation, a second generation? Who's the first generation in the IS community? The one that actually found it or the one that actually was educated as an IS person, right? If it's educated as an IS person, I would say the first ones were in the 70s, but they did not earn a doctorate. And in Mexico, uh, there were two, I, I, I would say, uh, trends, right? One was probably in the, in the private schools, information systems tended to stay in the engineering schools. Then in the public universities, notice that they're completely dominated by accountants, okay? Not even by people from business administration, but accountants. If, if, you, if you think, for instance, if in, in, in the main associations of, of uh, business schools in, in Latin America, like Alafec, right? Is facultades y escuelas de contaduría y administración, right? So they say first accounting, then management. Oh, by the way, we also have what they call administrative informatics. And, 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 and yet, instead of having a, a much stronger focus on business, they tend to focus a lot more in the old computer IS tendency that is more technical, is more to, for the software development, more related to software engineering. So still we have this, what is exactly MIS, right? <laughs> what is exactly CIS and, and what is what? Because we have a, a personality problem. So in Mexico, what happened is that these this majors were very successful, successful for a long time, and then they stopped being sexy, okay? And then the, the, the enrollment went down, even though the industry was requiring them. Yet, 
not enough faculty development existed to create a lot more people with a PhD in the area. So all the people that would come with a PhD would be a PhD in whatever else. And then they founded a couple of programs of information systems at the PhD level, Monterrey Tech and the, uh, and the uh, University of Aguascalientes, for instance. But they, the, the University of Aguascalientes is a lot more oriented also to the IS development type of thing. And they don't have critical mass. There's not enough people being developed and, 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 and graduated from those programs. There are good, you know, good ones. One comes from the University of Aguascalientes. He's uh, one of the, of the professors there. And, and, and then at Monterey Tech, what happened is they made alliances with Arizona State and, and, and University of Arizona and, and UT Austin and whatever to try to make it stronger and create people, faculty, to form faculty with PhDs in information systems. But it, the problem, I should say, and, and I will deny it if you repeat it, it's not it been recorded, but I don't think it was successful, okay? Because a lot of them, most of them did never graduate. And, and what happened is that the, the, then the area shrank. And then they started giving it fancy names and things like uh, business technologist engineer or uh, business engineer, right? And then you change it and then you try to, to make it look like something else. And what happened is really the discipline never got to be mature. So in Mexico, you have a very sad story or very old awakening with very clear vision, but never really reaching to that moment of maturity in which you see it growing like you see it growing in Brazil or like you see it growing in Chile, that you have a clear definition of the area. You have a community that actually feels belonging with the community. In Mexico, we cannot say that we have a community. And we cannot say that you have this group that people want to join and who people who, people who recognizes it very much. So it, I think it's a sad story with all the potential that Mexico has. And yet that's what happened, okay? So it's, it's, it, would be, it would be very interesting to see what are the factors that foster growth in Chile and, and, and Brazil that did not work in Mexico, or what, what, what was the uh, inhibitor, or what was the facilitator? Yeah, well, I have a, question a guy named Alexander raised his hand, but I think he talks too right. much. Yeah, okay. but, I, but, but I have a question that I think I is know, okay. important at, at this stage. I remember that once uh, when uh, you invited me to one of your NEAs, uh, yeah. we were discussing uh, a program that involved professors from different universities. Remember, it was not information systems. I think it was some other uh, branch of uh, computer science or something. Yeah. But that was, I mean, that was what sparkled our own think of, a, a, you know, start uh, starting thinking of a seminar like this or, you know, that, that thought that we could join forces instead of working uh, uh, each one on, on their own. Uh, uh, and, and now you're telling me that that, that kind of efforts uh, never worked well. <laughs> no, actually, you know, they, they worked well, uh, but for, let's say, for the con contributions of different programs, one with each other to strengthen each one, right? but not necessarily to create a joint IS program that would have all these ideal forces. You know, when at, at a certain time in, in history, we proposed to the IS to create a Latin American PhD program that would actually be working with whatever few faculty we had in each one of the countries, rather than trying to make it all in one university at one time. At, at that time, probably it was before its time, because with the technology we have today, yes, sure, we could do it. With the technology we had then, Probably not. Okay, it, it required a lot more mobility, physical mobility, and a lot of, uh, of of joint administration that was, by definition, bureaucratic and difficult. A lot of red tape, but it's still a good idea, and it still can be done. Right, much better now than before. Absolutely. Sure. Is there any? I sort of took the emphasis out of Guillermo's question because he had a question for us, right? Uh, no, no, no. My question was for Aurora first. Yeah, uh, Pietro has raised his hand. Hi, Pietro. Hola. <laughs> Um, hello, Guillermo. Nice to see you. Very nice seeing you. Uh, it was very interesting to know about Chile and Mexico, and uh, it's it's similar like we discussed last week because I think the, the the area is it's hard to understand which is IS and which which is not IS. Like you said about other area using some IT and considering or not the. Uh, pure IT. It's very interesting, like you said, about, okay, they found, they, they, they are the, the founders, they create the area, but the background and the, the idea, maybe it's not like we are discussing now. It's not like we are using now, because of course the area improved and advanced in a lot of fields, but it's different between IS used by marketing and uh, IS Pure IS uh, related to marketing, or I don't know how, how can I explain in English, it's harder, but uh, it's 
it's something like this. We we can think about which theory are pure IS and which theories are using other fields and using other things and apply in IS context or in IS and when they become uh, IS theory or they never will become IS and that's a, that's a question that has been asked for a long time because if you think about it Pietro IS is by definition multidisciplinary yeah so it, it's, it's not something on its own, right? And as computer has uh, computer careers have evolved, they separate from each other, and then they create new branches, right? Which is what is happening right now, and then that's why you see data scientists and you see ex experts in, in IoT and and all the new trends that are happening, right? So what's pure IS, and should we circumscribe ourselves to pure IS? Maybe that would be a, a bad thing to do because I, I think IS by definition has to be kind of a, a, an an integrating discipline, right? I don't know. That's probably what I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, just to define or try to define these boundaries or not define, but to see the boundaries. And it's... Yeah, but, right, right. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's quite, well, I, I think Pepe and Eleni wants to talk. Okay. <laughs> Pepe? Jose Okay, okay, hi. Or, or Jose Robles, as uh, Alexander would say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You can hear me, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I wanted to talk, to tell you. And by the way, my name is Jose Antonio Robles. I'm I'm from uh, I'm an associate professor of information systems at a Sun Graduate School of Business in in Lima. And um, I, I I think it will be good to give you my background. I have a background as an engineer. I, I went to engineering school. In in Spanish, it's called ingeniero de sistemas, which somehow not perfectly but matches more like computer science so it, it is engineering school and, and actually i did my undergraduate degree in guatemala at universidad francisco marroquin in, in guatemala um, which started this computer science undergraduate degree in the early 70s okay so 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 in guatemala i guess the use of of, of computers and I also need to tell you some, some additional things about, about um, that specific program, because it's not fully computer science. It, it also has a flavor to information systems, because it will, I, will, I will say that my degree is computer science applied to not necessarily business, but organizations, okay? which that brings, I believe, the flavor to MIS. After that, uh, and, and actually I worked after, after I completed my degree, I mostly work as a software engineer, which is another program, another career that you can find in, in several countries. I think um, um, software engineering actually started in, um, in the US probably by, I believe it was started by Carnegie Mellon University, uh, which, is, which is really engineering. Although it also has a lot of flavor to I'm willing to say management administration because it's it, it, it also has a lot of of project management into it okay but it's basically about developing software it doesn't matter if it's for business or if it's for science or if it's for nasa it doesn't matter it's just about building mostly big software not not small applications because that's it's it, they actually treat small applications as as a different kind of software and probably they say you don't really need software engineering and you don't need to be a software engineer in order to create small small programs, small software. So I worked for several years as a software engineer, um, developing software for the for the government in Peru because I came back to, to Grand Peruvian, although I did my, my program in Guatemala. That that was that's a different story you don't need to hear. <laughs> but I mean it was life took me to, to Guatemala with my family. So I, I, I went to school in Guatemala, but I, I came back to Peru and I was working for the government developing software. Okay. And my, my idea was engineer. I, I was working as an engineer. I like to be working um, isolated. I didn't want to have too much contact with other people. I think that's a, a true engineer, not, not all of them, but I mean, I think a characteristic of most engineers, not all, not all. The right profile. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we want to work on our own. We kind of don't want to, to, to have too much contact with other people. We're not very social, on average. On average, there is there, I, I do know some engineers who are like very 
socially active, but I think the, the, the characteristic is that way. But someday, some company hired me to manage a technical area. So I said, okay, it's a technical area. I should be able to do it. Actually, I went to to, to work for the for for the company, which is not really a company. It was a nonprofit, but let's say it was like like a company work, like a like a company that started the internet in Peru. Okay, and and I was supposed to manage part of of of, of that, supposedly from the technical side. That's when I discovered I know nothing about management, and I don't even know how to manage a project. So, so at some point, I figure no, I need to I need to learn a little bit more of, of management. So I, I went and did my MBA, and that that's when I met my the, the school where I work now. I did an MBA, so I learned about for the first time I really learned about applying information systems, applying computer science specifically for business, and the way I I, I came to know about it. In my mentor as a as a scholar, he he was a, he graduated from UCLA in an information with an information systems PhD. So I started discovering the the field of information systems, and at this point probably it's it's useful what I call information systems. And basically, it's bringing together, it's studying and bringing together people, technology, and the organization with a focus probably mostly on people and giving services to people within the organization using technology, computer technology, basically computers. So information technology, right? As opposed to, and, and this is again my definition, you are very welcome to, 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 to have some discrepancy with, with my definition. As opposed to engineering, where the focus is not necessarily on people, but the actual focus is the technology itself. I think that will be computer science and even software engineering, where what, what really matters is building the, the object, building the technology, whether it's hardware or software, okay? That, that, that's the way I try to make this, this division because I think that helps in understanding the original question, which is the roots. And I think the roots, of course, of course, the roots of all of this is technology when technology has started to be used within the organizations and i think at least in peru we if, if we want to trace uh back to, to to when that happened probably that started in the late 60s and the reason why i know a little bit about it is because in the mid 60s my father came back to Peru, he went, he went to Chile actually to, to do a, a master's in, in statistics. And he comes back to Peru, mid sixties. And because he was, a, he, he specialized in statistics for, for government, for country accounts, which includes census. That's when for the first time, um, they started using computers for the census in order to make it faster. But it was probably one of the first applications. Most probably, I don't know that, but most probably a few banks were already starting to use computers by the end of the 60s. In the 70s, then the uh, end, um, the end of the of the 60s, in 68, there was the, the military uh, started a government. Uh, it was um, they, they actually did a, a coup d'état. Um, so so they they came into power. It was like socialist leftist um tendency so they kind of close the country which means no imports unless it was the government itself bringing whatever they wanted to bring including a few computers so most of the 70s we basically didn't advance much into the use of computers for anything not even for government okay so 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 we were like behind peru was was falling far behind in the use of, of computers do, during the, uh, the the 70s. I think it wasn't until late 70s when they started the process to come back to the democracy. And then in 1980, when they started slowly opening the economy to the rest of the world and allowing imports, uh, when we started getting computers in Peru. By that time, I was actually leaving the country. So, so I kind of missed uh a part of it i was i was i was still a little kid at that time uh, that, that that's what i wish to believe 
Um, so I cannot really tell you that I lived the, the, the whole story. I can tell you whenever we, you want to talk about the, the, the starting of the internet, which is another important point, then, then, I, then I, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable about that, but that will be for another talk. Um, but anyway, so it was probably really during the 80s when not really massification, but when more and more companies started to implement um, computer systems, computer technology for the organizations. Actually, business was also businesses needed to manage better, to do better management. Because remember, we were coming from the 70s, the economy was protected, the businesses, and this is important because businesses were protected, so they had no need to be efficient. So therefore, why spend any money in computers to make business better if no, we have no competition? There is no China, there is no Japan at that time. There is no, imports are closed. So whatever we produce in Peru, if I'm the only company, I kind of become a monopoly for whatever product I, I'm able to, to produce. And it doesn't matter if I'm not efficient. I just raise the price and nothing happens because I'm the only one um, um, uh, fabricating that product, then everybody has to, to buy it from me. So no need for efficiency. So actually, from that point of view, no need for computers, okay? Until, as I was saying, the probably early 80s, 81, 82 is when they started importing. By that time, remember that in the rest of the world, the personal computer was coming out, okay? Of course, some banks were able to, because I remember like early 80s from a, some kind of a school program, I ended up working uh, like summer work at a bank. And I remember they had a few computers, but it was still, this was probably 1980, either 82 or 83. And I remember that, that because I was trying to understand how they operate a, a bank branch and and i remember very clearly that whenever somebody show up with the with with the savings account at that time it was a it was a paper thing it, there, there was no card right it was it was like a little book they would come to the bank and say i want to withdraw let's say a hundred dollars so the the teller would say okay give me a second they will go they will go to these books printed by computers, so that's why I knew they had some, some computers, and they will start looking. But if the amount was a little bit bigger, let's say $500, then they would say, no, you have to wait. We we'll clear your withdrawal. And what they would do is they would actually take it to another guy in a separate office. He had a radio, and he would actually use the radio to call the central offices of the bank. To And, and they will tell the, the other guy at the, at, the, at the central office, they will tell, I have this account, please confirm if they have $500 and they are they are willing to, to withdraw, okay? So it was completely manual, okay? And not completely because as I was telling you, this, this book was printed every night. They would print these books and they will distribute these books to all the branches. This is already 80, probably 83, okay? So we were like, probably very behind. Most of you are, are probably going to laugh. Most of you are going to say, no, nah, in my country, by the 80s, we already had better, a little bit better systems. It wasn't great, but it was it was better in, in many places. So definitely we were behind. By that time, as I was telling you, I left the, the, the country. And when I come back in the early 90s, uh, things were completely different. Uh, as I came back and I was looking for a job, um, I, I was able to see that computers was were used like like heavily in in different organizations. The government. I, I came back to to work for the Peruvian Revenue Service, so tax collection, and we had like the best technology that we that you could get anywhere in the world. This is 1992, 1993. At that time, we were actually doing um, uh, data warehousing, data mining. We were starting with data mining, mid 90s. Uh, so it was like completely the opposite. We were like way behind in the 80s and 10 years later, we were like in some, not everywhere, but in some in some institutions, in some organizations, we were using like, uh, like top technology. But I think most of what I'm saying, although it was all applied into organizations, I think it was always looked at it from an engineering perspective, not really from a managerial perspective. So 
I, I still have some doubts whether I should call all of that management information systems. Okay, even today, and to make to, to finish my story. Oh, by the way, as I became a, as I became an, an, an academic, and I wanted to become a professor, I actually went to Arizona State University to do my PhD in information systems. And actually, Guillermo was was talking about that. And, and yes, I agree with Guillermo. Um, and he actually mentioned my school, uh, Arizona State and University of Arizona. Yeah, it, it wasn't easy to graduate. Many people would leave the, the, the program. Even when I did early 2000s, that's, that's when I started my program. Even at that time when information systems was, was better known and there was actually, at that time when I was doing my PhD, they, they, there was a lot, of, um, a lot of positions open and salaries were like really high. So, so my, my, my professors, I remember they were telling me, you should, you should stay in the U.S. and you should, you should, you should find a job in the U.S. because you, you are going to make way more money than whatever you can make if you go back to, 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 to Peru. But that's another story I, I decided to come back to, come back to, to, to Peru. Um, Sounds familiar. Yeah. So, so well, anyways, I, I had a Fulbright scholarship and, and, and it was an honor thing also to, 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 to come back to, to your own country because that's, that, that was part of the rules. But anyway, we have a right hand up there for you. <laughs> so, that, that's another story. Well, now that I'm back, now that I'm that I'm an academic and I work for a, for a university, although I work mostly and, and most of my work is at the graduate school of business, not undergraduate. I do know a lot of people, not just in, in my university, but other schools. And I think in Peru, there is still a confusion about what is information systems and what is engineering, as, as some of you were, were talking about that. And to, to make this shorter, because I'm already talking for too long, um, I'll, I'll give you this example. I, I, I once went to, to the, the head of, of a program, which to me, it was a little bit closer to information systems than the program I did as an undergraduate student. And I asked, why you have this program which looks like information systems? Why don't you call it information systems? Why you keep calling it information systems technology engineering? And then my question was, why you have it in the engineering school if I can see that most of what you are doing, it's probably more towards information systems, which should be, according to my scheme, should be in the business school. And then the answer was, well, the reason why we haven't sent this program to the business school and delete the engineering part of, of, the, of, the, of, the, um, of the degree, it's because we figure out that parents, parents want their kids to be engineers. So it's basically a marketing strategy more than, more than really a, a definition, but still that creates problems because kids doing information systems and technology engineering, they still have to go through a lot of like physics and, and some engineering basic um, courses, okay, in order to be engineers. So, so I don't know, I, 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 although I, I was not really able to give you an exact date when, when we can trace back information systems in Peru, I hope I give I gave you and and I I fully agree with with Guillermo and, and and this problem that information systems as a field doesn't fully have uh, an identity. I think that is very well reflected also in Peru. I don't think we we are at the same point uh, as you were describing. I don't know how is it in Brazil, but it seems to be a little bit more consistent. I'm not sure about Chile, although Aurora was describing because I, I actually met some of the people that that Aurora was was describing in. I still see that there is there is not probably not as much as in Peru, but I still see there is this, uh, there is confusion between information systems and and computer science or technology engineering. Okay, well that's I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pepe. I, I think we have Elaine and then Renata. Uh, it will nice to hear you as well. Your mic, Elaine. All the times. Uh, I I'd like to thank uh, Jose because uh, you had just explained it to me why the uh, the E area took so long to be created at the Nampaji because we did not have imports here. Also in Brazil, we had poor information systems, and when the things were developed, we were able to create there. Thank you for this. I 
I was not able to comprehend this until you, I hear from you. Uh, taking Pietro's point also, it's nice to think when something really became management information systems, when, when you are drinking something from other area. Because, of course, all, all our theories, we started being based on psychology, on sociology, and so on. But I think sometimes we start to, to do a kind of research that systematically is applied on the triangle that you presented, the organization, people, and uh, technology together. So when you, we put this to be systematically applied to this, we, we started to have the management information system area. So if you look back, uh, probably the technology acceptance models, for example, was something that started being created at the, the psychology and then uh, had a break point and started to be management information systems, giving just an example of a theory. But thank you, Jose, it was a, a nice thought. Renata? Okay, hi, everybody. Well, thank you, Marianne, for letting me speak a little bit. And I'd like to thank Alessandri for motivating me. Go there and say something, contribute with your view and so on. Because I've been... Uh, and, and I have to interrupt you just to say that Renata's uh, view is very important because I think we are, again, the majority of the people here are business yes. people talking about information systems. And here in Brazil, I would say that the computer uh, people in the computer departments are also just as strong uh, in yes. and, and have a different perspective that we try to merge. Yeah, yes. thank you very much, Renata, for Thank you, Alison. But I will be very brief, okay, Marianne? And what I can say is that I'm a, I've been an active member of the special Information Systems Special Committee within the Brazilian Computer Society. It's a huge uh, research community here in Brazil in, computer, in computing. And actually, I was the one who created this committee um, maybe uh, well, 11, 11 years ago. So I've been following all the Information Systems Research Community since then. And what I can say about the starting point from the computing perspective is that maybe uh, the Catholic, Catholic University in Rio de Janeiro, Oquilio, was one of the pioneers of having uh, information systems degrees, not using this term, but we had the data processing technology and system analysis. Uh, that, and these were very important degrees in Brazil, very uh, historically considered as important uh, degrees. And, and then we just started to seriously discuss um, uh, education and guidelines for IS higher education in Brazil uh, in late 90s, okay? And we have a set of, uh, of uh, different degrees in computer science in Brazil. One of them is information systems. We do follow very, very close the ACM computing curricular uh, guidelines, okay? And one thing that's very interesting to, to share with you is that in numbers, we, we have more IS undergrad, undergraduate degrees in Brazil than computer science ones. A lot more, a lot more. And, and although inside the computing community, people don't really already understand what this uh, degree is, the purpose of, of this degree. And we can say that, uh, they, I don't know if they really uh, believe that this um, that this education is important. So why do we have so many uh, IS degrees in Brazil? Maybe because market uh, has been a very the main driver for this. Maybe because we have in the in the computing area our information systems very close related to software engineering too, and system analysis, and and maybe because uh, having information systems degrees historically. Uh, has been a good strategy for, especially for private universities, to somehow, how can I say, compete with the public universities with very, very, very solid computer science degrees and research programs. So uh, I think that is the, the 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 scenario and the starting point from the computer computing science computer science area. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Renata, to coming to, to share with us your computer point of view. Uh, Alexandre, do you want to, to add something? No, uh, well, everyone knows that this is an effort that uh, Guilherme was pretty much into, and uh, I'm, uh, I think that we definitely have to do. I don't think that uh, information systems in the future is going to be a business uh, uh, discipline because, I mean, we, we, we are much more concerned with, uh, with issues related to society these days than, than organizations itself. So uh, we will have to find our space. Uh, so it's, it, it may be in the, the business schools for tradition. It may still be in the computer science departments for tradition, but we may have to find other places. And uh, considering that we are 
I don't know, interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary or whatever, uh, it's very important that at least we build these bridges. And I remember that uh, first time I think I met uh, Renata was in an MZIS, uh, where was that? Uh, yeah, but anyway, it was an MZIS uh, uh, some many years ago. Uh, and uh, and uh, she was there trying to figure out what that was about because uh, uh, at least from, from, from the Latin America's perspective here, it was more like a business uh, thing than, than, than a computer science. But uh, I, I have, what I have to say is that it seems that they also, they, they want to, to understand us. We have to try to understand them and we have to be closer together because we don't belong there and we don't belong here or whatever. You know, we, we, we actually don't belong anywhere and we'll have to find our own personality, our own, uh, you know, we we'll have to find our own spot that is somewhere else in the cloud, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, from my point of view, I, I don't think that we really uh, be worried about where we are, if we are in a, in a business school or we are in a computer science school or whatever. I think the most important thing is that we feel like as a community, we feel that we have something in common, that we are researching topics in common, and um, and this makes us as a community. And, and if we are in a business school, in engineering school, computer, uh, it, it depends on the, the policies of the, your own country, because probably some, some countries has, you know, the, the, something that came uh, top down that we have to follow anyway. And uh, in, other, in other situations, uh, the university has, is more open to new courses, to new, to be, you know, more transit in terms of very and so on. In other cases, uh, it doesn't work. So it's more, Okay. Um, that's it. I should have want to share the screen and we have some more questions. I think somebody with the mic open the microphone. Elaine, if you are. Yeah, we don't okay. have someone with the mic uh, on. Let me see if we can. Oh, yeah. Can you? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll share your next slide. But before we do that, I know that we have people from other countries uh, here, and even some professors. So uh, I don't know. I don't want to. Uh, Donna's here. Her, but, pardon? Yeah, Donna. You were asking for Donna. Donna's Hi. here. Uh, I was I'm here. Her name her, but, uh, but Donna, Donna, Guillermo has put on the squad. Tell Hola, us a little Donna. bit about what's happening in Panama. Oh, well, uh, in Panama, IS is not um, like it doesn't exist. A no, one university, one university, uh, La Tecnológica, they created after a while, uh, because it was um, computer science. We had, I graduated from there and it was computer science in, um, from 1970 something. <laughs> and um, it, it was, that's where I entered in computer science, computer sistemas computacionales, they call it. And um, recently, maybe because the, a certain movement with the curricula of um, ACM and uh, IEEE, they, they decided to um, enter in the IS. So formally, uh, in, in between the public universities that um, are, are doing the, um, computer science and other um, careers that are similar, uh, they are basically the only one that are using are doing um, IS. Uh, apart from that, in the development in Panama, we don't use so much as IS. We, they say it's computer science and um, developers, um, system engineers, and that more. The part of um, industry, the administration, plus uh, computing, that is more what we would call IS, is not like it's like how you have listened to how you use you do this thing it's not like that it's it's like different it's not the same uh, the academia um don't sell this as a product um the people in um the faculty of administration they have um i think they have like um something like i guess but they don't they don't um work with us they work independently in the same university <laughs> So I, I tell you, it's not the same. They, they have like different trends and some do these things, the next do the next thing. And that's what we do here. <laughs> so I'm here because I'm interested in, you know, in getting to, to, the, to the basic, to um, uh, let's say, um, try to get into line at least. Don't skip from Mexico to, <laughs> to Colombia <laughs> and past through Panama at least. <laughs> 
Perfect. Uh, Donna, I, I think one thing that will probably most of your students who are with us, and again, they were. Yeah, they, were, they are here. There, there were many at ISLA, there are many here as well, which means that although, yeah. uh, again, they are in an engineering school, but I think that they're doing the, what, what we have found uh, difficult to do in the past, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's the engineering school. Yeah. Yeah. She mentions ACM, she mentions <laughs> IEEE. She, does, she didn't yeah. mention AIS, which means that she's she's <laughs> going to the dark side, right? No, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. for words, Alexandre, uh, AMSIS is coming to Panama City. I said, no, no. Oh. Well, I, I, no, no, sorry. Please don't do this to me. Don't. Well, it is good already, Donna. So. I didn't say AIS. I didn't say AIS because um, the uh, ACM and I actually did the curriculum. Yeah. <laughs> We understand. Oh, and, uh, uh, if, it if it wasn't for well, AIS is coming to Panama, though. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't AIS for Guillermo, <laughs> Guillermo would have. I wouldn't have known about AIS. Uh, Guillermo is the one that introduced me to, to AIS. I did. I'm guilty. Okay, so, and, and that was one of the yes, best things you're I did. Guilty. He yeah, he, he did showed me. Aurora, Aurora, Aurora. How are you, Aurora? Any other countries? Today? Any other country, yeah, today here. Even even if it's a student, I, I mean, well, you know, sometimes we have people here that you think, well, these guys were there 20 years ago. <laughs> even if you've been there for only one or two years, but uh, but if there's anyone from from another country that wants to risk and say something about how you perceive information systems in your country, feel free. I don't, I, I'm not sure if we have any other countries here today, but anyway, if we do. No, you want me to, uh, another slide there, uh, Mahi? Yeah, I think we, we can continue okay, with so uh, the, the next question. Then let, let me see. I'll have to put my laptop think, on again. Yeah. So I can... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. Have... Let us say the starting point that we already talked, and perhaps many of these past and present was mentioned by you, but I don't know if you want to add, add something that. You didn't mention about the uh, the important topics that uh, were discussed in our in the past in the IS in your country and and right now because probably has changed and, and if you want to talk about that yes Hanata <laughs> may I oh it's just to it's it's very very brief uh, it's just to share with you that we have uh, built within the the IS research community from the computing perspective <laughs> uh, what we called the the big or the grand research challenges in information systems in Brazil for the next 10 years since to uh, 12 uh, 2016 so I'll just share with you the link and we have five great challenges so this is what we think that Don't you the, oh. Can you show them to us? Just uh, you know, hijack our screen here and show the the website or whatever. Okay, maybe. Let me see if I can. May I share something? This is the this is our digital library in the Brazilian Computer Society. So uh, we have this ebook where we uh, built the Grand Research Challenges Information System. So if you had the, the chance to take a look, uh, uh, in very broad and general way, we have five uh, big uh, challenges. One that has to do with systems of information systems so how we deal with this uh, combination of different information systems that we have to to deal to to face business today we have uh, information systems and the open world challenges how do we face the open world uh, the complexity of information systems in the perspective of building information systems also um, uh, the social technical view of the information systems actually we have four four main uh, challenges so we all the process of building these uh, research challenges are documented in, in the book and also all the, the visions from different researchers in our community are, are registered here too. Okay, so I can share, uh, Alexandre, I don't know, in the chat, sure, uh, share the, link. The, the toy, Perfect. And, and maybe if you want. So those are our challenges. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, is there any important topic that uh, you, right now that uh, I think we, we have some topics that regularly uh, appear in our area. Uh, and I don't know if you want to share that. My yep. here would be, uh, are those, uh, do you think that those topics are different? Possibly not, right, for different uh, countries or different areas. We, I mean, we're, we all live in this very tiny world these, these days. And what is a, a challenge for one of us is probably a challenge for most of us. 
uh, I, from my perspective, uh, one challenge that we would have from business schools is, well, now uh, someone said that at the beginning we had to, if we were in information systems, we even had to learn assembler, right? Well, being an electronics engineer originally, that was not very difficult for me for 30 years ago. Uh, but nowadays, I think that one of my challenges is learning Python <laughs> and, and, and mastering uh, R and mastering, uh, you know, some of these uh, technologies that allows, allow us to make sense of the, 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 the data that we have. Uh, and, and, and maybe one of the things uh, that we as uh, academics in information systems uh, will have to discuss also is, uh, are we going back to data again? I mean, I mean data science became a big thing, uh, but we, we, it took us so long to go from data to understanding what information could be. By the way, uh, the, the paper that Mahi assigned to us as a proposition of uh, reading says that this is something that we should uh, discuss again, right? We don't, we, we, we don't even, when we talk about information, for example, we don't all talk about the same thing. When we talk about systems, we don't talk about the same thing. And when we talk about information systems, then uh, uh, Alan Lee uh, was uh, arguing and, and we have to agree, uh, we are in a, do we say it in English, Babel Tower? Torre de Babel. <laughs> you know, each one is talking about a different thing and we all guess that we're, you know, talking about the same thing. So I, I would uh, say that we have to, one of the things that we have to do is um, even become a little more rigorous about what we want to study in the future so that we make any sense to anyone than ourselves. I believe that this is related to our, um, you know, our area that is quite transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary. So this is very uh, common in, in, in those research that trying to mix people from several areas that we do not understand the same with this in the same world, we understand in a different way. So perhaps th this is something that we have to continue discussing. Even uh, Alan Lee mentioned that in, in a long time ago, I think we, we still have the same problem that he, he mentioned on that paper. Uh, I, I see Aurora and Guillermo with, yeah, yeah they want to. Um, I wanted to add that that important issue that we have to take uh, into consideration when we think about the topics. I, I could say in Chile, we are very much into the issue of industry 4.0 and also digital transformation. And it has to do with that we are a producer of copper. We produce copper, we produce lithium, we produce, and then we are very much concerned about producing and how technology and systems are used to produce. So maybe that uh, has something that impact tremendously uh, the, 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 the focus of, of what we do. So in, in my case, we have uh, the 10 biggest uh, copper mines around my, my university. So we're much a lot related with mining, even though we are not miners, we have to be related with mining. So that's uh, something that we have to consider. The focus has to do also with the geography, with your main economic you know, systems and, 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 and also the culture. Hi. Uh, You're building on what Aurora just said that basically uh, our focus on research should be very contextual, right? Based on, on, on whatever needs we have in the, in, the, in the area. I would say that in general in Latin America, there are a couple of things that we need to consider. The first one is how do we potentiate whatever talent we have so that we make the most of it and we can maximize or multiply its possibilities to uh, replicate talent, right? And, and and strengthen the discipline and strengthen the the, uh, the capacity of the, uh, of the faculty and the students to make the discipline really grow. And the second has to do with what Stacey Peter has been talking about and what we have talked about a lot is that this contextual part of the research has to be pertinent, right? It has to solve a problem of the region. And in Latin America, we have a very different uh, Distanciation of things and, and our idiosyncrasy is different. Our problems are different. Yet we need to produce research that is recognized internationally. And, 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 and we have to address problems that are important to a region, not just in the ether of the thinking, right? So, so because we can't afford, we are few. And if we are a few, we rather have some impact, right? Rather than just being thinking on, you know, on, on the karma and the nirvana, the whatever in the, in the, <laughs> the philosophical part of it. So I think that really being able to maximize the potential and uh, produce research that actually solves problems for the region, those would be my main two objectives in this case for IS in Latin America. Okay, you may still have other people, may still have other thoughts to bring there, but I would like to just present the, the lights, uh, the last slide that Marie had uh, prepared here for us, which is about challenges, because then we can yeah. already. That's what I want to suggest that the next slide are the challenges. 
yeah that's one see i can be invisible here you don't see me but you see the slides and i <laughs> <laughs> So what were or what are the challenges of creating, keeping the field of information system in your country? Uh, the, 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 the main one in my case is the lack of understanding of everybody as to what is the difference between the different computer disciplines. And I'm talking about the students, the faculty and employers. Nobody is certain of anything. And they all think that they're all the same, but different flavors. And it's, it's, it's amazing because that is a real uh, preventer of development of the discipline. You know, but for the information system students, what I usually say, regardless if they come from a computer, uh, computer school background or the business background, I tell you, I tell them, although you seem to be the, I don't know the, the name of the fairy story, the, 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 the little ugly duck or whatever. The ugly, du the ugly duck. The, the ugly duck. Although uh, others consider you the ugly duck, you are going to be their boss. So that's what uh, we all and, say to them. Yeah. And, 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 and so, so at least be a good boss, right? So it's very hard because if you're going to be the boss, at least be a good boss, right? Be a, a boss that knows what you're doing because others do not deserve to, to suffer the consequences of you being mediocre uh, only because they sometimes think that you know less mathematics than, than, than they do or whatever. So, uh, but, but, I, but I completely agree with Guillermo. I think AIS and ACM and I at Ripple, we have done a great job in, in trying to define a few of the possible uh, areas of uh, practice in computer, in, in, let's say, in computer related uh, uh, professions. Uh, but, but that's definitely still not clear to society and even in our schools. Uh, so uh, society don't read the IEEE reports. Somebody else wants to add. Renata, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Well, I agree with Guillermo and Alessandri. We still have a lot, a lot of difficulty to make people understand what's the, the meaning of information system. It's a very loose defined term. And uh, especially uh, students ask me something like, if I do engineer, engineering, I will be an engineer. If I do information systems, what will I be? So what's, the, what's my profession? So we don't have it. You're going to be and, a bachelor. <laughs> Oh yes. You make sure it's the very engineering important. title, the engineering title in Latin America has to has pedigree, right? Today. Yes, yes. And 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 that is a big problem. Yes, that's a big problem. And and so sometimes I, I, I to be honest, sometimes I think that something something passed on my mind like this. Is information systems a good name for what we are doing? Okay. Probably not any longer, right? Not any longer. You know, so well, maybe not, not having be? the name, Renata, not having the name for the profession is is bad. But uh, I, I don't know if th this is because, of course, we came uh, 300, 300 years after the engineer, at least. And I'm thinking the engineer okay. that started with the Industrial Revolution, right? But uh, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, or, in fact, yeah, uh, whoever studies law becomes a lawyer. Whoever studies medicine becomes a medical doctor. Whoever yes. studies engineering becomes an engineer. Whoever, Whoever studies information system becomes a bachelor in information systems. Come on. Okay. <laughs> but but the point, Alexandre, is the, the, that information systems, at least from the computing perspective, has a kind of a historical structural prejudice. You know, it's the ducky, ugly duck. It's the it's the easier degree. Computer science is very difficult. Information systems, so I have heard a lot of students saying, well, I gave up a, C a computer science degree to come to information systems degree because somebody told me it's easier. You know, so we have this structural uh, prejudice. And so whenever we say information systems from the computer uh, perspective, computer perspective, oh, sorry, perspective, it's something, oh, those guys that don't want to do the hard work. So, you, you know, so. Maybe if we had another name and, and, and we could really uh, make uh, this, our contribution, as Guillermo said, relevant in the, into this name, uh, maybe it would be interesting. I don't know. I don't have the answer. Okay. Yeah. But, but I think that this is really a challenge for us. We have a, a prejudice that comes for years, you know. Maybe yeah. we should break it. Sorry, man. No, no, that's okay. I'm sorry. I, I was anxious to talk. Uh, it's because I think that the perhaps the, the change will come not from changing the name but if uh, well evaluating the, the in the market so if the market evaluate this kind of professional that has this interdisciplinary point of view studies and um, 
prepare to be more inter more you know uh, interdisciplinary and the market uh, uh, evaluate this as a, as a very uh, strong point uh, of, of a, a new professional in the future perhaps uh, we don't need to change the name that we, because it will not change anything just the name is because I don't think that we are going to change what we are doing right now uh, so probably I think uh, nowadays that the information systems are more evaluated in the market because you now uh, we are doing uh, e the e -commerce, well e-commerce is not quite more anything new right now but you know uh, we are doing using the technology all the time uh, so probably they will feel that this kind of professional will be more important in the market than were before. No, but it's, uh, you know, borrowing a little bit on what Renata was saying is that I do have students who think that they are second class uh, computer engineers. And, uh, and I tell them, well, you got it all wrong. <laughs> Yours is a completely different profession. And, and it's, it is uh, concerning that how they choose one of the, one or the other of the majors is based on completely different and, and, and erroneous criteria, right? Is they don't understand that these are completely different professions. That yeah, I mean they have the computer in common, but that's it. I mean they, they do have very different orientations and very different objectives. And as Alexander says, I mean at the end these are going to wind up being the bosses of the others. But that's I mean not necessarily a rule because also you know we have many dumb ugly ducklings and we have many wise ugly ducklings. So <laughs> it all depends on how each person actually performs. But 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 you're right. I mean the the misinterpretation is being carried on a lot. And when private universities actually look for fancy names to market the major, rather than reflect the nature of it, then we are all in trouble. And then you call engineering whatever is not engineering, and then you put it some robotic mechatronic component to it, and at the end it's going to be Frankenstein in in in, in a very sexy name. And 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 that's that's when we have the problem. In short, Guillermo, what you're saying is that we, it's better that we not even think of changing the name but we keep the name instead of <laughs> just let's keep the management information the, the management component is important right and the information system and then we can add for society if you will all right well okay well thank you very much thank you Marie for for, for being challenged and, and and doing that thank you Pepe for courageously jumping in thank you Guillermo Aurora and everyone else uh, who was here with us today please help us advertise this to other people uh, uh, other students other professors this is a space for us to, I mean, we want to, to make this stronger year after year so that in the future, and, and this has to be something that belongs to our community, right? So we have, we need the community to come here and take ownership of it. Otherwise you will have uh, Alex's and Guillermo's talking all the time. <laughs> and that's G. <laughs> we are already too seen. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Good talking to you.